Hello, everybody. Today is December 31st, 2023. It is the last day of December. It is the last day of this year. I am still in lockdown with the Lord and very much in my wilderness, though he is speaking of the crossover or the transitioning out of and the fulfillment of the Lord. So that's beautiful to me. I've been through a lot in the last, well, at least the last month, but in general for quite some time. But in the last 24 hours, it was um quite interesting again. <laughs> Um, and I don't mean to sound like everything yesterday was hard. It was, there was a lot of beautiful moments of, of things that took place yesterday. And I have to thank the Lord for those things uh, earlier in the day. Just quite amazing. Although a difficult time for the family, um, the funeral to attend. And then some strange happenings in the evening, along with a mixture of, both strange things and beautiful things from the Lord. And just, it's, I, I feel like just explaining it to you is the roller coaster ride that I have been on <laughs> in the year of 2023. The year of death to self and death to a whole bunch of things carrying the cross. Having said that, I'm going to pray, Father. Father, I pray that you will help me get out of the way. I pray that you will have your way um, in this posting and in this video unto your children, unto enlightenment, unto uh, the description of all things you want to describe and reveal to us in this today. And I pray that you will help me be able to make it all the way through this. It's quite long. Um, and... Um, May unto your glory and by the grace of God, these things come forth and teach and enlighten your children. I found them quite beautiful, albeit during really difficult times. It seems to be in scripture that that's the way you come through uh, many times over to your children in great ways with great revelation. So I thank you for that. And again, I ask you to help me get out of the way and for your anointing to go with to enlighten your children and bring them into all truth by your spirit. In the Son's holy and precious name, Yeshua HaMashiach, on behalf of our Father and Creator, Yah. Today, given the past 24 hours that will unroll as this video goes on about um, things that have been taking place, I woke up this morning quite dismayed, very much in that frozen state again. I cannot explain that state to you unless the Lord has actually taken you down that path. Because there are some children who have yet to go down the path of the complete refinement stripping um, in every realm and sector of their person. Many have been through it, don't get me wrong, just not in every sector and realm. And so the place that I'm in with him right now is a very, very difficult one um, on all fronts, he just said. So it's like hitting the um, the gambit, the culmination of all of them um, in a concentrated time period. So when I went to sleep last night, uh, after some things took place, I... I went to sleep doing the best that I could, focusing just on him and doing my best to just release it all to him and leave it there. Not easy. And so when I woke up this morning and I started coming to and and um, it was probably about 9.30 a.m., I started working on this not too long after that. And it is now 6 p.m., and I just finished it. So it's quite extensive. But it began this journey today because I looked at him kind of frozen. Just that, like that emoji with the two dots for eyes and no mouth. Just kind of staring at him like, I, I, I don't, I'm not really sure where to go from here. Because the way my day started out yesterday was to proclaim and call forth the things uh, that I don't see yet in the physical uh, into the physical by his decree and it was beautiful and I felt the power of the Holy Spirit move on on my actual 
um, body, throughout my body, and um, bring me into that place where I knew that the the fire of the Lord was moving in and on behalf of his decree. As the day went on, um, we were fighting, not feeling so well, um, achy and whatnot in the body. As he has told me many times, my body is fighting a lot. And and then we attended uh, Doug Barrett's Zoom, which was, was really, really good. And I would encourage everyone to uh, watch that if you have not. I need to add that to my channel under the listing of Doug Zooms. I haven't done that yet, but Lord, please remind me. Um, and then as the day went on, it, it, having been that it was already difficult from the things that happened the night before, which will be detailed out soon. And then the conversation with him this morning. Uh, in addition to being on that Zoom yesterday and then the things that happened in the evening, uh, it's been difficult. So uh, he sat with me this morning in the spirit, which I'll explain more, but he pulled me over to a space and he sat me down and he said some, he said a word to me, he said very few words. There was more than one, but uh, one of the words he said to me was justice, which I'll explain later in here as well. And, uh, and I quite frankly have learned not to just assume that I know what that means. So I ask him, which will be detailed in here as well, what do you mean? And so it began this, this posting that you're going to see, this video, this revelation, this journey that I had with him today, where he wanted me to look at his love. Uh, which encompasses his goodness and his justice, which encompasses his goodness uh, and how it applies with our uh, tabernacle of David that he's resurrecting in his people. And, um, and so I have Psalm 89, 14 here for justice and judgment are the habitation. And when you look that up in Strong's, it says the properly fixed basis, the abode foundation that is settled of his throne where mercy, which is his beauty and kindness and goodness and truth, which it says in Strong's is his stability, certainty, trustworthiness, assuredness, faithfulness, and verity shall go or project and meet us for help before the face of God. I needed that today. I needed more than just those words that we normally speak without all those Strong's definitions. I needed the fullness of this verse explained to me and shown to me today. And he's done just that and more and i hope to bring that to you in the way that it has impacted me and i'm not going to speak very much more than that because i think that this will explain everything in here and it is quite long so he's asking me to go into it now and i have some strong definitions here to begin with um, of justice and love H6666, which is funny to me because I had someone uh, t tell me recently, got a, such a sense of humor. On the back of my credit card where the code is for the security code, it has 666. And I just laughed. I said, that's him. And also, that's not a bad thing. It's an icebreaker starter convers for conversations for you to introduce the gospel and the witness of Christ. Because just about everybody, including the heathen, knows that uh, three of anything means whole or complete. Uh, and six be being um, carnal man. man. And so it's the fully carnal man. And that's a starter for a conversation icebreaker right there. <laughs> and I found it delightful to tell this same person today that H or in Hebrew 666 six, six, six is justice, um, which is the, the uh, righteousness um, and the rectitude in this definition. It's moral virtue um, and prosperity. It's right, um, righteous, or uh, enacting righteousness. And rectitude is morally correct behavior or thinking. And so when we read this, we have to know that this is, he's describing himself morally correct correct behavior or thinking righteousness and synonyms are righteousness goodness virtue moral virtue morality honor honorableness integrity principle probity honesty right mindedness trustworthiness truthfulness uprightness upstandingness good nature scrupulousness de decency fairness equity justice principles and ethics 
and the root of the definition of rectitude is right and straight. H6663 justice. <coughs> Lord help me. This the root is to to be or causatively to make right in a moral or forensic sense. Cleanse, clear, be or do justice, justify or be turned to righteous or righteousness. And the definition of forensic in the dictionary is to investigate and the root is in open court and public. So he's saying, I'm going to make things open by my court decision and known publicly as I investigate each and every life by his justice or his equity, his fairness to make things right. Righteousness, morally right, acting in accord with divine moral law and the root being right or manner, state and condition of being right. So when he says his righteousness, he means it. his manner, state and condition of being right, equitable fair, just, um, as he investigates. H6664, justice, the right uh, in moral or legal to be right, equity, which is f f fair and equality, uh, prosperity, and also that which is altogether just or justice or righteousness. H4941 justice, and it's properly a verdict pronounced judicially, especially a sentence or formal decree. So not only is it morally right and fair and equitable as he investigates, but he's going to make a decision based on it. The act, the place, the suit, the crime, the penalties, looking at all of that. Justice, including a particular right or, or privilege, statutory or customary. So that's a, that's a lawsuit. Uh, plus or minus adversary, ceremony, charge, and crime, custom, desert determination. I thought that was quite interesting. Discretion, disposing due in fashion or form uh, to be judged through a judgment, justice, justly, manner of law or lawfulness, manner or measure due and ordered. And then he wanted to break down love. So G25, love. Um, and this is the agape love spoken of, and this is to love or to be loved in a moral sense. Uh, again, agape G26 is also love that is affectionate or benevolent and is a love feast, a feast of charity or charitableness and dear love at that. H157 is love and it is ahab and it is to have con affection for um, or to be loved like friend. And H2863 is love or koshak, which is to cling, that is to join, to love and delight in, to deliver, to have a desire, delight, or to be set in love. H7356, love, that's rakam. And that is compassion, by extension, the womb. So as cherishing the fetus, that would be us, he knit us in our mother's womb. Uh, also, by implication, a maiden. So that would be the bride of Christ. With bowels, compassion, damsel, and um, ender love. I'm pretty sure that that's not what I meant to put in there. So love, great, tender, mercy, or pity of the womb. I think it's endear. Like as an endearing love. Oh, it would help if I... Put it on the editing mode. G5368. Love. This is phileo. To be a friend to or fond of. That is have affection for denoting personal attachment as a matter of sentiment or feeling. While 25 is wider embracing especially the judgment and the deliberate assent of the will as a matter of principle, duty and propriety. The two thus stand related very much and respectively. And the former being chiefly of the heart with the latter of the head especially to kiss as a mark of tenderness, kiss and love. And oftentimes you'll see in scripture that where mercy and truth kiss, etc., and so on. Many of, um, many, many think of or preach on phileo love as being only a brotherly love, but that would be more closely resembling the Greek word Philadelphia, which is G5360, and it means fraternal affection or brotherly love and kindness and love of the brethren. H1732, uh, David, and 
he had me put this in there because he wants us to understand the root of the name of David is love is at the root or his name means loving, uh, beloved or favorite. The Lord began to speak to me in the spirit regarding my current circumstances. One of my front teeth is rotting out. It's brown and has been for some time and it broke off again last night eating a breadstick. Now most people would run to save these types of things, and trust me, I've asked if I am pleasing him, obeying what I have believed thoroughly that I have heard him say in the years that have been passing, and that is, Janet, hold fast and trust me, I have provision that no man can bring to you, and I have ordained it since long before you came into this world, or battle, or circumstance. And he has assured me time and time again, I am following his lead on this. And so I remain steadfast that he will finish what he has started, that he will lead me through what he has led me into in completion and come out the other side. And I say that because he said to me, no dentist can regrow bone, but I can. They're not going to get the glory. I am. And so I need to explain that that's originally what he said to me, beside the fact that we have... Um, family who is Jewish that does not exalt him, in fact, debases him. So it will be a witness to many. As you can see, it is very painful, humbling and hard on me as evidenced in the look in my eyes, the window of the soul. But I have been asked to hold fast to his provision, to believe in his goodness and to wait on his fulfillment of his word over my life as it never comes back void. So he sat with me in the spirit today, put me on top of a mattress, that's the bed of intimacy, trust, and love, and he said to me, as I stared at him, a bit frozen from the affliction trauma to my soul, we all struggle, and he said, justice. And I said, what do you mean, justice? And I asked that because I've learned not to assume from my own understanding of what he might mean by mentioning only one word to me. He sent me on this mission now, this video and post to define, reveal, and recall his love, justice, and the tabernacle of David being reinstated and resurrected in these days, the days in which you and I are living. And so I am going to show you what he is showing me and leading me to witness in this life, the goodness of God, his love, his justice, and unto those who are the tabernacle of David or love resurrected. Genesis 18, 13 through 19, And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore, or why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child who is old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but you did laugh. And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. The Lord promises us much, but do we roll our eyes, doubt in our hearts, and laugh at him like Sarah? I would venture to say many of us do or have, and yet he is faithful and true and supernatural, meaning he exceeds all that is in this natural realm and bends it at his will. Can he not do anything? Is anything too hard for him? If he promises something, his, ver his very identity, his very reputation and namesake is on the line, meaning called forth to perform it. And he is not like a man that he should lie or fail. Will he not bring forth his own will in the earth? Shall he keep good from his children? He says, I know the children of Abraham, the children of the faith in me, and they keep my way and do justice. I will perform what I speak forth. The Blessing of the House of Israel by Moses. And this is quite a bit of the chapter 33 of Deuteronomy. The meaning of the name Reuben is behold a son. Deuteronomy 33, 6. Let Reuben live, not die, and let his men be few. If we break down this verse, Father said to me, with the name of Reuben put in, and all subsequent names in these verses, for all sons that I behold, then you will see that I have decreed for all sons to live, not die, and for there to be a remnant of them. Meaning of the name Judah, praise or praised. 
Judah, age 3063, celebrated, and also meaning the tribe descended from the first. Deuteronomy 30, 33, verse 7. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and be a help to him from his enemies. And here the Lord said, Here we can see that there is a blessing upon my people, the people of my household of Israel, the spiritual household of my people, where I hear my people, and I bring all my people together in each tribe, or people called to assemble together spiritually in my household, and will and my will is to bless their hands in sufficiency and to be a help to them from their enemies. I love this. As he asked me to swap out names of people for their meaning in these verses, he will bring forth today because he, quote, would like to show us some things. He said, I have a need for my people to understand the spiritual meaning behind what I say. And so with a thorough explanation of the names of Jacob's children, the children of the faith, we will see more into what I have left unto my household. We can see the children of the faith believe, trust, and reverence of our spiritual God are the people of praise who celebrate our Lord. They are the people of the first, and that is God himself. Not only is God our first love, but he is our first true and final sacrifice, our first true reconciliation to our Father once again, the firstborn of many brethren, the first seated over all the other children of God, the first and only true God. He is the self-existent eternal one, Jehovah, the first. And so his children, the spiritual house of Israel, will be those who are the firstborn duplicates, the first fruits of his loins, our person, the seedlings of the Lord, and all in him, in Yeshua, Amashiach, the Christ Messiah, are the spiritual lineage of Judah. The people who praise and celebrate the first, the prince, the principal one, our Lord himself who reigns over all of creation, Yeshua, the word of God who will at some point, when all is completed, hand over the authority from the Son, who serves the Father, into the hands of the Father. For at that point the Father will be the principal one over all his children, in completion of the Son's role to redeem them to him, and will live with our Father Creator forevermore, where all things will reside in the hand of the Father over his children. The beauty in that astounds me. The beauty in that the Lamb and the Lion can rest. In the bosom of the Father, his rule over his children, having the Lamb completed, and that all have received his sacrifice, the laid down life of the Son, his mercy and his love extended and received. And the lion can rest over all his conquest in his jealous love for his creation, having received all who will be received and who were promised him from the beginning, and all being completed, and all now with our Father in whom we all hailed from, we can now rest in the embrace of the Father returning full circle to where we began first love the meaning of the name levi united joined or joined in harmony levi attached deuteronomy 33 8 and of levi he said let your thumen and your ermine be with your holy one whom you did prove at massa place in the desert and with whom you did strive at the waters of meribah place in the desert who said unto his father and to his mother i have not seen him neither did he acknowledge his brethren nor knew or recognized his own children for they have observed your word and kept your covenant they shall teach jacob your judgments and israel your law they shall put incense before you and whole burnt sacrifice upon your altar Bless, Lord, his substance, and accept the work of his hands. Smite through the loins of them that rise against him, and of them that hate him, that they rise not again. Levi, the people united, joined in harmony, attached to the Lord. In context of the lineage line in the natural, the people of Levi were the priests. In context of the spiritual family and household of the people of faith in the Most High God, these are the sons of God who are joined to him in the yoke and are attached to him in the heart. And here we can see that God has blessed the priests of his spiritual priesthood, as we are a peculiar priestly holy people of the Lord, that the judgment of the Lord God in his righteousness, his justice and moral judgment and sentencing, be with the sons of God who were proved in the desert. Proved means tempted and tried, and in his this and in this spiritual example came through, enduring and standing steadfast in the Lord, the love, the truth love, mercy, and justice. And as well, the desert has spiritual symbolic meaning too, in that it represents the fact that his sons or children were tried, tested, and proved like the refinement of a sword in the refiner's fire in the wilderness. 
as that is in the Strong's definition of H4057, which is desert. So essentially, God's children who have been tried through the trials and afflictions, stripping and refining of their faith and belief in God in and during the desolate, barren, desert, wilderness time phase in their lives will walk out the holy and righteous judgment of the Lord, which is what the Thuman and Ermin were for. Oops. Because they were tested by God, by the Spirit, led into the wilderness testing of Satan as like he led Christ into, and they were proved there and received as overcomers in holiness and righteousness, faith, belief, and trust in God, upholding the truth within them against all evil spiritual opposition, thrown, throwing down Satan, excuse me, And keeping God wholly erected in his rightful place within their hearts and lives, high and lifted up as they lowered themselves and upheld the father of them. Because these have been a people that the natural carnal people of the world do not recognize because they are a peculiar people who stand out in their service to God wholly to his righteousness for they sought it his truth, and his person. And so God's justice and righteous judgment flows into and through them because they have observed God's own word, his person, ways, and conduct, and have kept covenant with him. Wow. What revelation of the true sons or children of God, the people of spiritual faith in him, and seated with him in his domain. And these children of his, the children who are united, joined in harmony, attached to the Lord, shall teach the rest of the household of Jacob, God's spiritual children, God's judgments, his justice and his decree of conduct, and to the house of Israel, the household of God, his law or conduct, because the conduct God is beholding of each of us daily as to whom we are actually bowing to and serving. I should put instead of because the, because our conduct, God is beholding. And these children of the most high and holy God will bring beautiful and prayerful incense, a sweet savor unto him that rises to the heights of his throne before the Lord and will offer burnt. That would be refined, meaning their inner spirit and soul refinement as the hand of the Lord refines each child of his sacrifice a laid down life refined reformed and given back to god his dream to have us return to his image and our conduct soul and spirit upon the altar the altar being the place of the laid down life where god's mercy over us meets with him the truth the way and life and we become attached and joined in harmony harmony agreement and concord Agreement or harmony between people or groups, and the root meaning is joining, concord, and joint. Concord root meaning is of one mind together, heart. You see, we will be the people who are joined and united in harmony or concord of one heart, one mind together in agreement that will only come when we believe and have faith in all he has said, all he is, and all he made us into to begin with. And all he is remaking us into as we step into the new creation made by the hands of God in his image. We must believe we have an accord with the Almighty and we must uphold or we must hold up or uphold the truth within our hearts for real. In this we find our salvation and we hold up or uphold covenant, yoking in the truth, God's conduct and disposition in which we were made in and remade back into with the Almighty. Then, in this we are joined, attached, and of one accord, in concord with one heart, one mind, and one together, yoked up in agreement to, and partnering with, as one entity, the Almighty, Holy, and High Creator of us, His dream. And in and by this, we come to the last part of the blessing over these people, the spiritual people of God, that He desires for us to understand in these passages. That Moses is asking of the Lord to bless these children's substance and to accept the work of their hands. And as a show of this, he is asking God to smite through the loins or the waist, the midst of them, the ones who rise up against them, hate them, and to do it so that they rise not again. All because these people are united in harmony, concord, agreement, and refinement through reformation of the hand of the Lord unto the Lord, God can show himself strong in these individuals. 
I am reminded right here that God is my strength, and I would not be able to sustain in nor handle all that has been given to me on my plate, lest he truly was with me, yoked to me, and upholding me in his hand. I have seen him show me this symbolism time and time again as he picks me up into his hand in the spirit. And that God is the only recompense against the ones who rise up against me that I need. And that recompense is rooted in his love and justice. And God, my father, is he who is faithful and true. And so I wait on him and I endure all trials and testings of my faith all the way to the end of them. I have two dreams that happened last night after this tooth broke, but I will bring them up later. Benjamin, son of the right hand, Deuteronomy 33, 12. And of Benjamin, he said, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him and the Lord shall cover him all day long and he shall dwell between his shoulders. The spiritual house of Israel, Jacob, God, is love of him. We are a beloved of the Lord people, and in this we shall dwell in his safety, him. And the Lord will cover us. I saw him do this uh, to me in the spirit more times than I can count, cover me up with his skirt or wings. And to dwell between his shoulders is where he is almighty. On his shoulders rests his dominion over all, and between his shoulders rests the strength of that dominion. And we gain the result of that dominion and might when we exalt, uphold him, and covenant with him in obedient, reverent love given back to him. Covenant fulfilled, joined in harmony. We become sons of the right hand of the Most High, ruling and reigning, one and only God supreme, when we walk out proper relationship with him, upholding covenant, and that is good for both the goose and the gander, or the bride and the bridegroom. Joseph, God will give. Joseph, future, let him add. De Deuteronomy thirty-three thirteen through 17. And of Joseph he said, Blessed of the Lord be his land, for the precious things of heaven, for the dew and for the deep that couches beneath, and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon, and for the chief things of the ancient mountains, and for the precious things of the lasting hills, and for the precious things of the earth and fullness thereof, and for the good will of him that dwelleth in the bush. Let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. His glory is like the firstling of the bullock, and his horns are like the horns of the unicorns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth, and they are ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are thousands of Manasseh. Here we can see that for the spirit child of God holy, he will give, and will give is a future promise, one that is forthcoming. He will not forsake or forget his own. He will exalt him in due season. The provisions mentioned here by the Lord's blessing unto his people are those of which come to the land of the living. Here we can see the provision of God unto his spiritual people to fulfill blessings to them in the earth and in their earth as they are taken from a measure of it. We see God come through in all his glory to uphold his children and blessings in this world in the material needs of his children to flourish here. God's goodwill extended. And because these children, the spiritual children of the Lord, have been blessed in their separation from all the other brethren, this is a distinction of intimacy, trials and testing and faithfulness to uphold God and the truth in circumstances that will bring God's blessing upon his head in this lifetime here and in the next. That's position and rank. These children of the Lord whom he will give to will be firstlings, first fruits with horns, altar worship reference, like the horns of the unicorn horns of the altar of God where commitment, covenant, and sacrifice are upheld. And these people of the Lord, these spiritual people will push or bring all his other children together to the ends of the earth, evangelism and unity, from the ends or reaches of the whole earth, thousands and tens of thousands as they are joined in harmony to the Lord, for he will manifest through them, lead them, and perform his works through them. Zebulun, gift from God, honor, sacrifice, dwelling, Zebulun, habitation. Issachar, his reward will come. Issachar, he will bring a reward. Deuteronomy 33, 18 through 19. And of Zebulun, he said, rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and Issachar in your tents. They shall call the people unto the mountain, there they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall suck of the abundance of the seas and of the treasures hidden in the sand. 
The people who are a gift from God. Excuse me, I need to capitalize that. Oops. Who walk in honor toward him, sacrifice, and lay down lives in this world, set against him, who dwell together with the Lord, and who are waiting on his reward to come, are the spiritual people of Israel, they who know their God, and are known of their God, and Father of them. These people, the Lord says, rejoice in your going out and in your staying in, which is to say rejoice always in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. These are a people who should always, no matter what, remain in hope, steadfast, and take joy in the Lord God who is for them in all circumstances and times. Not easy, but the Lord blesses and cares for his children and exalts them in due season. Endure to the end of your battles with him and against his adversary, for his reward is sure or faithful and true to come. And these spiritual people of the Lord will call the people to the mountain of the Lord and will call them to lay down their offerings and sacrifices of righteous walk, joined to the Lord in harmony as one entity together forevermore. And in this they shall suckle from the abundance of God in all that he is and has to supply to us treasure hidden in him. Gad, fortunate, also a prophet. Deuteronomy 33, 20 through 21 and of gad he said blessed be he that enlarges gad he dwells as a lion and tears the arm with the crown of the head and he provided the first part for himself because there in a portion of the lawgiver he was seated and he came with the heads of the people he executed the justice of the lord and his judgments with israel here we can see that the child of the most high and holy god is a child who will walk in a portion of the lawgiver now, who is the lawgiver initially? Our father, of course. And the portion he gave to us is Christ, the son, to lead, save, and redeem all sons. These spiritual children of the Spirit of God will walk in Christ, the portion given to all, of the lawgiver himself, our father, who is seated at his right hand. Again, they will be the children of the right hand of God. Justice and judgment are in his right hand. These children will be seated in Christ, walking in the just judgment, the decrees and order of God. They will uphold his justice and judgment, and so they will be heads or leadership with and by God. They will rule and reign with him, seated with him, the portion given by the lawgiver, our father himself. And they will be fortunate in this as they will walk as priests and kings, and they will prophesy. They will walk in the prophetic, knowing the mind and heart of God, for they are joined as one to him in harmony. The crown of the head or leadership, blessed as a lion or high ruler in Christ, will tear the arm, the dominion down here, the fallen, by the leadership in him, the head over him, Christ. The beauty of the revelation here floors me. Dan, God is my judge. Judge. Deuteronomy 33, 22, and of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan. Here we see the spiritual people of God are a people who have made God their judge. They do not sit in the seat of the throne of their heart or mind any longer. They have placed him in this throne within, and they are seated in him and with him because of this. And he rules and reigns supreme in them. He judges them, leads them, and raises them up. And in this we see he is a duplicate offspring of God, refined and reformed as the lion of Judah's whelp, or little one. And he shall leap in fruitfulness, which is the meaning of the name Bashan, because he has God as his judge, not himself or Satan. Naphtali, struggling, wrestling, Naphtali, my wrestling, Deuteronomy thirty-three twenty-three, and of Naphtali, he said, O oh, Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessing of the Lord, possess the West and the South. Here in Strong's is here, the West here in Strong's is defined as to roar and the South defined as poetic wind. So the children of the Most High and Holy God will roar poetically in the spirit or wind and breath of God. They are highly favored and satisfied with God's favor, carrying the full blessing of the Lord with them. They have struggled in this world and have wrestled with the carnal world and the spirits thereof, and they have found favor and satisfaction in and with the Lord. And they will roar mightily poetically, which also means prophetically and strong, in their spirits in the spirit of the Lord, the wind. They are a force to bring reckoning. Asher, 
happy and blessed, happy. Deuteronomy 23, 24, and 25. And of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren and let him dip his foot in oil. Your shoes shall be iron and brass, and as your days, so shall your strength be. The children of the Lord will be happy and blessed because they have the joy set before them, the Lord, as the one they behold all day and night every day, regardless of the circumstances. They know in whom they have believed and upheld and are in covenant with. His children will be blessed to flourish in the earth with offspring, think spiritual children and disciples, and he will be acceptable received and approved of God's other children, and they will be evidently anointed with their feet dipped in oil, their foundation based on the good news gospel of peace, meaning where Christ, his blood, sacrifice, and relationship yoked to him, brings in godly order restored in the shalom of God, is on their feet or foundation. So they will be shod or shooed with strength and shine, anointing God's glory, the iron and brass, and as they are strong, so shall their days be strong in the Lord or upheld. What beautiful blessing and promise to the children of the Most High God and Father of all creation. Jeshurun means upright one, a rector. Deuteronomy 33, 26 through 29. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, which means upright, symbolic name of Israel, who rides upon the heaven in your help and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms and he shall thrust out the enemy from before you and shall say destroy them israel then shall dwell in safety alone the foundation of jacob shall be upon a land of corn the bread scripture body of christ and the wine the crushing of intimacy union and blood of christ Also, his heaven shall drop down dew, which is covering. Happy are you, O Israel, who is like unto you, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of your help, and who is the sword of your excellency. And your enemies shall be found liars, which is untrue, disappointed, failing and cringing, deceived and dissembled, disassembled unto you, and you shall tread upon their high places. Just wow to all that. Under the spiritual children of the Most High and Holy God, we shall be happy because the upright one himself, he who erects or stands upright, who rides upon the heavens in his excellency to be our help, who is our refuge and under his everlasting arms or wings, we remain forever, who will thrust out the enemy from before us and destroy him. And then Israel alone shall dwell in safety, and their fountain or eye of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn. They shall keep their eye on the bread, scripture, body of Christ, and upon the wine, the refining crushing of intimacy union in and through the blood of Christ, a new vintage created altogether, as he drops down dew, or he covers his people. Who are like these people, the peculiar, blessed, and favored children of the Most High and Holy God, Creator and Father of all creation? A people saved by the Lord shielded by the Lord or covered, who is our help in times of trouble and who is the sword of our excellency, the one who will make all our enemies to be found liars and cause us to tread upon their high places or whether they currently stand in dominion, our God will remove them and throw them down. I am so encouraged by what he shows us in his scripture and his love, goodness and justice toward his children. We may have to endure the darkness for a long while, But victory comes in the morning and by our morning star himself. I am enduring, but I know where it comes. I know wherein comes my victory and my restoration in all things, for he will glorify and exalt in due season. Job 8.3 and Psalm 89.14. Does God pervert or bow himself in falsification, judgment, that's the strongs, or does the Almighty pervert, bow himself in falsification and justice? Justice and judgment are the habitation, the properly fixed basis, abode, foundation, and settled on his throne, mercy, beauty, kindness, goodness, and truth, stability, certainty, trustworthiness, assured faithfulness, and verity shall go or project and meet us for help before his face. Jeremiah 23, 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David, or love, because that's what his name means, a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. 2 Samuel 8.15, and David, or love, reigned over all Israel, and David, or love, executed judgment and justice unto all his people. 
First Chronicles 18, 14. So David, or love, reigned over all of Israel and executed judgment and justice among all his people. Isaiah 9, 7. Of the increase of the government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David or love, the throne of love, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah 56, 1, thus saith the Lord, keep judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Jeremiah 31, 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as yet they shall use this speech in the land of Judah and in the cities thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity. The Lord bless thee, O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. Amos 9, 11 through 12. And in that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, or the tabernacle of love, that has fallen, and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up the ruins, and I will build it as like in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Eden, and all of the heathen who are called by my name, saith the Lord, who does this. He does not bow himself in falsification of justice or judgment. In fact, they are the habitation properly fixed basis, abode, foundation settled in and on his throne, where mercy or his beautiful kindness and goodness abide, along with his truth or stability, certainty, trustworthiness, assured faithfulness, and verity that are set before his face or projected to meet us for our help. And the day has come where he will establish, will raise up David, those rooted in love, a righteous branch, and a king, our God, shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and justice in the earth. This is the heart brought to true life once again by upholding the king and his dominion within them and who have sought out his righteousness to display within their own vessels led and ruled of he himself. And love, or David, will reign over all Israel, the spiritual house of God, and love will execute judgment and justice unto all his people. He is love, and he will reign love in his children, and their hearts will live unto the truth and by his love. Of the increase of his government and peace inside of them and in the whole of the earth, there shall be no end upon the throne of love and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts, hosts will perform this. That's a surety, a verity of reliability and faithfulness on behalf of he who is faithful and true. Thus, saith the Lord, keep judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness, that's his right and moral just judgments, to be revealed. And when the God of Israel fulfills, we shall speak of all of this, which is to say, witness it all, when he shall bring again our captivity or former state. The Lord blesses us, we the habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. Because on that day or time period, he will raise up the tabernacle of love that has fallen, and inside he will close up the breaches thereof, no open doors. And he will raise up the ruins or that in which has been demolished. I love that part. And he will build it as like in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant and of all the heathen or other nations of people who are called by his name, says the Lord who does this. And he said, highlight the days of old. I'm going to take you back full circle to where you began before the fall. Amen. What a glorious God and glorious promises based solely on who he is. We should take who he is into our hearts and let him be established there in truth, rooted and grounded into our every fiber, trusting him in faith to bring these things he has written and spoken, promised and will fulfill. I'm so encouraged in a time of trouble for him to point all this out to me and to you. And these are the two dreams that occurred last night. I had dreams last night and attacks in the spirit. I had two dreams of attacks, one spiritually, literally a spirit being, and the other symbolic bodies coming after me and stabbing me. In the first dream, I went into the restroom and I sat down to go to the bathroom to relieve myself, and an unseen entity came and put his hands around my neck and began to strangle me. In strong, strangle equals throttle, as well as to strangle, as in squeeze the breath out of. As I was seated to relieve myself, I was unable, unable to and had to begin to fight for my life. I knew it was a demon, and I could feel it, but not see it. It continued to wrestle and strangle me, throwing me around the bathroom. I was calling on the name of Jesus. I was speaking in tongues. I was angry, and I was full on not giving up. I continued to physically and spiritually, my prayers and decrees and petitions to the Lord, fight against this entity, never giving up. 
I managed to get my foot to the door to make noise unto someone on the other side of it. And it must have worked because the entity just released me. And as I was then able to open the door and exit this restroom prison attack, I saw it slink away into the shower tub area. It was dark black in the form of a person. The second dream was where men were chasing me and stabbing me with knives, to which I took it from them and stabbed them back with a fatal blow as I watched them lose steam in the chase, fall back, and end chase or pursuit, as well as no more attacks. Now, both of these dreams are symbolic of what is literally happen happening to me, both spiritually and in the physical. Not that I'm being stabbed with a knife, but that my physical being is being attacked. In the first, it shows the spiritual attack that is coming against me. It shows that entities are attempting to kill me, strangle me, subdue me, and take me out. And in the area of restoration and relief, because it's taking place in the area that should be for relief and restoration, the bathroom or rest room. But here we see the enemy has come in. I failed to mention that right before this, there was a window in the bathroom and something when I came into that room rustled and fled from the window area as the window was open. Right after that, the entity attacked. In whatever way, in whatever circumstances, God has allowed the enemy to have entrance into the area of restoration and relief. But he is asking me to trust him that what the enemy seeks to destroy, he will use to destroy him. That what the enemy steals, we will take back sevenfold and then some from his own household. And where the enemy has made a prison attack unto me in restorations and relief, God will come in and the enemy will be forced to release the hold on me. It's not fun to wait on the Lord in this way, but I am learning to trust him. And he just said to me as I type this, quote, and in the follow through of my faithfulness in my love, you will learn of my goodness and taste and see that the Lord is good, end quote. So I wait in whatever state I find myself in, and I attempt to be content in it, as Paul said we are to be. As the dream goes on, I do not give up. This is showing my persistence to adhere to what God has said to me, to fight, to endure, and to trust in him. I am evidenced by the struggle, the prayer, the, the petition, the petitioning of the name of Christ, and praying in the Spirit, as well as my physical struggle to knock on the door to gain the attention, make noise, of he who is on the other side. And when I do the entity, God's adversary releases me. This is evidence of the follow-through of the dominion of God in my life as I reach out to him, and his justice, power, authority, love, and goodness come to my rescue in the release. His dominion wins. The entity slinks back away from me into the shower area. This is where the word that washes us, the truth, cleanses me from all evil and takes out the enemy in submission. He tells me all the time, quote, you do your job and I'll do mine, end quote. It's his job to rule in dominion. It's my job to uphold his dominion and rule in me. Walk clean with him. I had backed the entity into the shower when I lifted up my foot to make noise to the door. My foot, the place shod with the gospel of peace and peace, God's order restored. As I lift up the Lord and uphold the truth and stand steadfast in it, him in trust, I backed the entity up into the cleansing of the word, and no darkness can remain in the light of his truth. I am going through the fight, but this dream is a prophetic fulfillment coming. It details out what has happened, what is happening, and how the victory comes to the people of faith. We may be attacked in the physical, attacked in the spirit, attacked in areas of fulfillment, restoration, and relief, but all battles end eventually, all struggles end eventually, and to the child of God, they win in victory where the Lord is upheld, called upon as we uphold the truth, washing of the word of truth, and become cleansed by it, dispelling the darkness, and the enemy must release us. After that, I ran out of this place. I turned the corner understand that symbolism and i ran right into a construction area where men were repairing the road so i won that battle by the lord stepping in as i stepped into the cleansing of the word and then i exited in a full run moving forward and quickly turning a corner and came straight to where the path has me on is being repaired and renewed think symbolically and that is where my dream ended with me sitting in the dirt think symbolically we are the vessel of the lord made of earth with the men of construction on the path. My path will be repaired. My dirt will be repaired and renewed in the victory of a long and drawn out strangle, str strang strangling to take me out will be won. 
I hope this brings you, child of God, some peace and hope as it is meant to. Our battles have been long in the wilderness and desert, but all times come to pass and all battles come to an end in the wilderness testing. And at some point he crosses us over. This too shall come to pass. Let us recap all the points of what we have learned today about our God unto his children. It truly is astounding revelation. Deuteronomy 33, refer, 33 references to the tribe to the tribes with the names and meaning filled in for understanding and written as such. And this is absolutely stunningly beautiful. As he said, quote it, I'm going to speak this to you, Deuteron Deuteronomy 33, to the spiritual house of my children. All sons, quote, all sons that I behold, and this, and these are the verses with the meaning, that's it, put in, but he's speaking it. All sons that I behold, the remnant, will live and not die, and the praised and celebrated spiritual tribe, descended from the first, will have help against his enemies. His hand will be sufficient as I hear their voices. The united, joined in harmony, and attached ones to me, who have been tried and proven in the wilderness, who are a people the carnal do not recognize, for they observe my word and keep my covenant with me. They shall teach my household judgment and my law or conduct. They shall bring savory prayers and incense before my throne and refined life sacrifice laid upon my altar. I will add and give unto them a future, ordained and planned since the beginning where I saw their ending or result from the beginning. They will be blessed in their substance, and I will accept the work of their hands. I will smite their adversaries in the midst of them who hate them, and they shall not rise up again. The sons of the right hand, me, are the beloved of the Lord. They will be blessed in material matters, the things in the earth, and they will bring forth precious fruits. They will have goodwill toward them, and blessing comes upon their heads, for they were separated out from among the rest. They are my first fruit duplicates of myself, and they hang upon the horns of my altar. They push and propel the people, gathering them together from all over the earth, thousands and tens of thousands of people. I will bring their reward, for they are a gift of God. They walk in honor of me and sacrifice to me, and they abide and dwell with me. They will rejoice in their going out and in their coming in. They will rejoice always in the Lord, in their tabernacles of love. They will call and gather the people together in the mountain of the Lord to ascend in him, in their offerings of their laid down lives, and in their walk in my righteousness. They shall suckle of my abundance and in treasures that have been long hidden away and supplied and ordained for them. They will be a prophetic and fortunate people, blessed and enlarged as they walk in my dominion like lions, tearing at the arm of the dominion of the fallen ones in the earth realm with the crown of the head, which is myself upon them. They will carry the portion who is seated, which is the word of God, who is seated in the place of dominion within their hearts, who is the lawgiver himself of the father. They will execute the justice of the Lord and his judgments. I am their judge, and so they are my whelps, or little ones of mine, duplicate plantings of the Lord, my children, my offspring, they who I judge and rule in. They will have struggled and wrestled in their wilderness and bearing up under their crosses, just as I did in the sun, and will have been tried, proven, and victorious. And because of this faithfulness and perseverance, determination, and love for me, they have gained my favor and are full of my blessing the blessing of the Most High, and they will prosper as they roar in the spirit or wind, the west and the south. They are happy and blessed, for I am with them. I go before them, cover them on the hind side. Hind side. That was supposed to be, because he literally said that to me. Not hindsight. And walk with them. They are blessed with prosperity and spiritual children or disciples, and are found acceptable and approved by the brethren, for they are anointed. And the oil drips from their foundation in me. Their feet are anointed to carry the good news of myself into the world. Their covering upon their foundation shall be strong and bright, and their days found in strength. I ride upon the heavens, Jeshurun, the upright and erected one, within them, and I bring their help in my excellency, dominion, sovereign, dignity, ruling one over all. There is none like me, the only true and loving God. I am the eternal God the refuge of my children, and under my arms or wings I keep them. I shall thrust out the enemy from among them and shall destroy them entirely. Then my Israel shall dwell in safety alone, and the eye of Jacob shall be upon a land of wheat or corn, the land of the bread, word, body of Christ, because it literally was wheat when you looked up corn. I find that interesting that he's harvesting us as wheat. 
The, the land of the bread, word, body of Christ, and of the wine, the crushing of the intimacy and refinement of our relationship by the blood sacrifice of the lamb to reconcile my children to myself, a precious vintage expulsion. And happy are my children, O Israel, who is like unto you, my children, the people saved by the hand of the Lord and shielded by my help, by my sword, and by my excellency, I save you. And your enemies shall be found liars, which is to say untrue, disappointed, failing and cringing, receive, deceived and disassembled. And you shall tread upon their high places. You shall rule and reign with me and they shall be thrown down. Wow, Lord, what a way to read and understand your scripture and promises based in who you are and who we are to you. As well, let us recall and remember your definitions of your justice and love, justice, rightness, rectitude, moral virtue or figurative prosperity, rectitude, morally correct behavior or thinking, righteousness, and the synonyms are righteous, righteousness, goodness, virtue, moral virtue, morality, honor, honorableness, integrity, principle, probity, honesty, right-mindedness, trustworthiness, truthfulness, uprightness, upstandingness, good character, scrupulousness, decency, fairness, equity, justice, principles, and ethics. And the root definition is to be right or straight. It is also to be made right in moral or forensic sense. Cleanse, clear, be, or do justice. Justify or be turned to right or righteous. And he said, remember how it says cleanse here and you back them into the shower area? Yes, this is my justice coming in. Forensic means to investigate and the root is in open court public. He said, I'm going to make it known. This is for all my children. It will be known in the land of the living. Righteousness is more morally right, acting in accord with divine moral law. And the root is right and manner, state, or condition of being right. Right. And this is all still part of justice. Right. Natural, moral, or legal. Also, abstractly, equity or prosperity. That which is altogether just or justice and righteousness. Properly, it is a verdict pronounced judicially, especially a sentence or formal decree. The act itself, the place, the suit, the crime, and the penalty. Justice, including a particular right or privilege. It's statutory or customary. It's pl and plus or minus just means these all any of these things can apply. Adversary, ceremony, crime, and charge. Custom, desert determination. I found that really interesting as we're going through this wilderness. Discretion, disposing, due fashion and form. Due means it's, it's coming to you. It's due to you. To be judged in judgment, justice or justly, by a manner of law or lawfulness, manner or measure, due and ordered. And then to define your love as well, Lord. To love, in a social or moral sense, be loved. Love, it is an affection or benevolence. It is a love feast, a feast of charity. It is dear love. It is to have affection for and to be beloved or loved like a friend. To cling, that is, to join, to love and delight in, to deliver, to have a desire of delight or be set in love. It is compassion. It is an extension to the womb as cherishing the fetus itself that you knit us together in. And by implication, it is a maiden or a bride, bowels, compassion, damsel. It is endearing love, great and tender mercy or pity of the womb. That is who he created. It is to be a friend to, to be fond of. It, it is also to have affection for denoting personal attachment as a matter of sentiment or feeling. It is also wider explained as embracing, especially the judgment and the deliberate assent of the will. That's the will of God as a matter of principal duty and propriety. He said, highlight duty and propriety. I have something that I have to fulfill that you cannot. You do your job. I'll do mine. The two thus stand relatively very much um respectively together the former being chiefly of the heart and the latter being of the head and he said this is where we're joined in heart and head specifically that's headship his headship his lead his mind his will his agenda and we're joined as one in the heart and it means to kiss tenderly also brotherly love which is philadelphia 
that is our God and that is how much he loves us and has all provision and promises for us because his person is faithful and true and follows through on those promises. He is not a man that he should lie or otherwise be untrue, disappointed, failing and cringing, deceived and disassembled. That's Satan's lot, sons of the right hand. And that's what he has asked me to bring forth today. And there's just so much in there that speaks of his promises to his people who are his people? What does he say about his people? Who is he? What has he said about his love and his justice to his people? Because there's so much that we need to understand about him and his goodness and that he doesn't change. He is steady, Eddie. He is stellar in unchanging, uh, resolute in his person and character, his reliable nature, his faithfulness to us. And that's what he's wanting to remind all of his children of today. Because he said many are going to be crossing over Jordan very, very soon. And so they have endured their wilderness process. They have been tested. They have been tried and they have been proved, approved of the Lord. They have endured when everything wanted them to quit and to give up. They have become overcomers over the enemy. And he is going to release the bonds of the enemy over the trials of his people in these ways as the dream, as the dreams, both of them detailed, because not only um, in the bathroom scene was the um, enemy of God uh, called forth by God's dominion to release me being a child of God, representing the rest of the children of God. But in the other dream, I was being attacked uh, in the physical uh, and the physical the physical struggle was turned back on them and I absolutely destroyed them, um, which would be by the hand of the Lord, the children of the right hand in the physical will be God coming through with his promises because he said, you have upheld your end. I uphold my end. And he wants me to remind that uh, to all of his children today because it's been difficult, he's saying, and it's been very, very trying and a long battle on a great, very many of us. And uh, he's faithful and true. He is not going to forsake us or forget his promises or, or be void in bringing any of them to fruition. He planned them since before there ever was this place, before we were ever in a body. He will fulfill his word and never comes back void. And he wants to remind us of that. And he wants to encourage us uh, with what he's bringing forth to his children. Um, and I'm asking him right now because I believe he's going to be doing this for a great many children soon enough as we enter into this new time period, ending one year and coming into uh, 2024. 2023 was the number 23 is for death. It's an ending phase. It's a carrying of the cross. So we're entering into to 2024 and there are new things on the horizon for us. There's a new dawn to our morning uh, in 2024. I'm not speaking about the things that will take place in the world. I'm talking about his children. And with that new dawning comes the victory in the morning with, with his people from the morning star himself. They've upheld him. They've stayed in covenant. They've kept his ways. They've kept his word. They have loved him. They've remained true to him in the midst of all of these battles. And he will fulfill his word. And Father, I thank you for all of this today. And I pray that we will all study this and listen back and really allow you to um, with your truth and your person to penetrate our hearts and to convince our hearts that are so fickle uh, that you are true and that you can be relied on. And as you bring forth these things in our lives, we will witness to the rest of the world that we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And we will bring you to the rest of them, fulfilling your decree of bringing uh, the rest of the nations of the people to the mountain of the Lord uh, to know you and to couple with you and to join in harmony with you as like same. And um, I pray that we bless you, Lord, in some way, shape or form and bring joy and happiness to you continually as well as we walk into this new season with you where you are going to quite literally change our lives entirely, catching us up and recommissioning us and going forth with us to do exploits of the which that we have never stepped into before. I look forward to that. I look forward to doing the common works you did, which was raise the dead, believe it or not, and things like that, casting out demons and healing the sick. But I also look forward to the more than that you're going to bring forth and the dominion that your person is going to walk out as you do your works through us in this lifetime and under your glory that no man can get. And I thank you, and I love you, in the Son's holy and precious name.
for the life laid down for the family of God and for the dominion that he reigns and, and rules in our vessels and brings forth into the earth realm so that he can hand it all back to the Father at some point when the lion and the lamb can lay down and rest because the sacrifice has been done and accomplished and all have returned to him and he's won all of his conquests in all of the earth, in all of the timelines, and in all of the lives. And we can live forevermore with our King, with our Father, with our Creator, and with the lover of our souls. 